Hi, welcome to the Baby Sleep Magic Podcast. My name is Chantel, and today's episode I'm going to be talking a little bit about transitioning from two naps down to one. Um, this is one of the most common DMs questions that I get, and even my old clients, they tend to come back to me at this point because once their baby gets to, you know, 12 to 15 months, this is where some challenges tend to start. So I thought I'd go into quite a lot of detail in regards to this transition because it is one of the trickiest transitions that you'll experience when it comes to naps. Um, so look, as a snapshot, most babies are ready to drop their second nap anywhere between 12 and 18 months of age. However, my recommendation is to avoid losing that nap too soon. Ideally, it's anywhere then between 15 to 18 months is usually ideal. Um, However, before you drop that nap, you need to make sure all the signs are consistent with your child being developmentally ready. So ideally, not just a few off days or a schedule you may prefer, because your child's morning naps are generally the most restorative. So it makes it particularly crucial for young babies who need that nap for early brain development. So it's really essential that you don't cut them out too early. But some of the signs that indicates that your child is ready to make that transition may include um, your child is starting to resist going to bed for their nap, their first nap, may even also mean their second nap as well. It also might indicate that they, they take a long time to fall asleep and in that time they spend a lot of time crying or talking or playing. They may only catnap as well, that's another indicator. They may start waking through the night and they may start experiencing early rising where they never did before. So those few things there can be indicators that your child is ready to start the transition. It usually doesn't make it happen overnight. Usually don't experience those things for two or three days and go, okay, let's do one nap a day now. Because they just, their development, their capabilities, their wake windows, they're just not capable of just switching, flicking a switch. So usually what we need to do is do it like transition it gently and, and easily. So the way I recommend doing the transition is the first nap ideally is the shorter nap because as your baby or well now probably toddler gets older, they're going to go from two naps to one and that one nap that they're going to eventually end up having ends up being around or after lunchtime. And that's the one nap you want to try and remain consistent. So the first nap is the first one to go and that's the one that we reduce to begin with. So look, as an example, what you want to start doing is slowly making the morning nap later. Um, and you can increase this by 15, 20 minutes a day over a week or so. And once that morning nap, it's, if you're still getting that morning nap, I would restrict that morning nap to anywhere between 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Because what you want to do at that point is you still want them to have a nap because they're probably not capable of going all the way through to 11 or even 11.30 on one nap at this point come 9 9 30 even 10 o'clock they're just hitting a wall they need a nap but at this point they don't need a huge nap because unfortunately if you do get a huge nap at this point their second nap is that's what's going to be the issue they're going to fight you on that second nap and for a baby at 14 15 months old even younger um, if you get a really good nap in the morning and you get nothing in the afternoon you're going to have a really long hard afternoon and that is not ideal because they will they won't eat dinner they'll be cranky they'll be irritable they'll be fussy they'll be clingy and then you're likely to have a really crap night as well because of the overtiredness has just accrued and as a result of being super overtired they then have frequent night wakings and they possibly even wake early for the morning so and that's not ideal so what you want to try and do is capture the nap in the morning but it only is a power nap and that's why I call it a power nap if you can't get them to have it in the cot do it on the go. They're still using their own skills and you're also using motion to your advantage. So either go for a drive in the car or put them in the pram and go for a walk. And look, at the end of the day, if they don't fall asleep, at least they're still getting some downtime. Then we can't force them to sleep. And most likely, in most cases for bubbers at this age, I call I keep going bubbers, but toddlers at this age, what you don't want them to do is go put them in their room, in the cot, put them down and they spend 15, 20 minutes or even longer crying because that's not helping you. It's not helping them. It's making them more cranky. It's making them more frustrated and even more tired, but they're not tired enough to actually go to sleep. 
So what you can actually end up doing in situations like that is spending an hour in the room trying to get them to sleep and, they, and then they only sleep for 20, 30 minutes, which it just stuffs up your whole day. So to avoid that, what I suggest and go back to is that motion nap. So car or pram, anywhere between 15 minutes, uh, sorry, anywhere between uh, 30 minutes to 45. It doesn't need to be any longer than that. And then after that, wake them up. And like I said just before, if they don't actually fall asleep because we're not in control of their eyeballs closing and then going to sleep, at least they're resting. They're still getting, you know, anywhere between 20 minutes to 45 minutes of downtime. They're not moving. Ideally, they're strapped in. They're not moving. They've got their comforter. You might even have the white noise on. They're zoned out. They're still resting. And that's all going to help at the end of the day. And it will certainly help achieving that second nap as well. So then once they've woken up from that power nap, this is where you then would do morning tea and then you would also fit lunch in in this next wake window as well. And this next wake window is a full wake window, whether it's three hours, three hours and a half, depending on the age of your child, it's around about that. That wake window, you need to increase the stimulation level to, next le to the next level. You need to make sure that they're really active and really busy in that time, as well as fitting in that morning tea and lunch. So as an example, morning tea might be around 10 a.m. and then lunch might be around about 11 or 11.15, maybe even a little bit later, depending on the wake window, um, because you want them to be nice and full and content, ready for their second nap, which is after lunch. But you also want to ensure they're getting enough stimulant playtime in that time so they accrue enough sleep debt to go and give you a good nap without protesting. And the only way to do that, especially at this age, is to keep them busy and wear them out. Because at this age, they're more likely than not walking. And if they're not walking, they're not far away. They're pulling themselves up. Developmentally, they're on the move. They're learning, they're pulling, they're doing everything they can and they want to. So increase that play time, give them lots of different things to touch and play and move and crawl and pull and walk and run and lots and lots of stimulant active playtime. So after lunch and when they're due for that nap, they're actually going to be genuinely one exhausted um, and two ready for a nap and three, they're going to give you a good nap. And that's ideally what you want because they've only, you know, had a power nap, so to speak. So, you know, and then in a situation like that, they might wake up anywhere between two and three in the afternoon, maybe a bit later. Um, and then they probably would need anywhere between a three and a half hour to four hour wake window, sometimes even longer, depending on the child, before they're then going to be ready for bed. If you pop them down too early, um, they might not be ready. And that's where some protesting might come in as well. So timing is absolutely key when it comes to bedtime. Pushing them out too late can backfire because they can become overtired. Um, so making sure they're in that ideal wake window, depending on their age, is absolutely key because, yeah, at this age, if you put them down too early, they will protest because they're at that age where they just need that more awake time. But if you let it go too late and they become overtired, then getting them to go to sleep can be a challenge as well. So, um, look, that's my, my spiel on transitioning from two naps to one. Um, and then, like I said, it's usually gradual. When you get to the point where even the motion isn't working, um, they're no longer wanting to even have that downtime or then certainly not falling asleep at that point, then that's when your little one is probably then ready to transition from two naps down to one completely. And the best way to do that, you, they might not make the full wake window in the morning to 11 30 ish or even midday so every few days or even it might even take a couple of weeks you can transition that time you know you can start their first nap of the day at 11 a.m um, and that might be their only nap of the day and as long as they nap reasonably well it can be anywhere from two to three hours maximum um, then that's a good nap and then you know, you might keep it 11 a.m. for about a week or so, and then you move it to 11.15, and you do that for another week, depending on the age of the child. Um, and then you do to 11.30 for another week, and you get the gist. Usually, once they've transitioned completely onto one nap, that one nap usually is anywhere between 11.30 and 12. Um, and obviously, after lunch, you want to ensure you feed lunch first, because that's going to give you the best opportunity for a good nap once they've had lunch and they've got that full tummy. And obviously, if they can self-soothe, they will ideally give you a really good nap. Um, if in the instance that your little one wakes up 
after an hour or an hour and a half and the nap hasn't been successful or hasn't been that good then what I would suggest in times like that is what you can try in the afternoon is you can actually do a power nap in the car in the afternoon so you can kind of flip it so in days where you're, you thought your little one was ready, but they've only given you a small nap and you're thinking this is not going to go to plan, you're not, your afternoon's going to be way too long. Anywhere between three and four in the afternoon, you could go for a walk in the pram or a drive in the car and you could offer that power nap in the afternoon to compensate for the lack of nap that they had earlier in the day. And again, it's a power nap. It's only a, you know, at this age, uh, sorry, at this time of the afternoon, it can be anywhere between 15 minutes to 30 minutes maximum. I wouldn't um, be pushing for much more than that. Um, and that should allow you for them to go home, eat dinner, enjoy a bath and still go to bed at the normal time, but it will avoid your baby or your toddler becoming really irritable, overtired, and then as a result of that, waking up through the night or early morning as a, you know, as a result of that. So um, that's my other tip for that. And then, yeah, once your child has completely transitioned from two naps to one, what you'll probably experience for a period of maybe a couple of weeks to a month, even a couple of months, depending on the age of the child, is an earlier bedtime. So if your little one's waking up anywhere between 5.30 and 6, their first nap of the day might be anywhere between 11 and 12. And then what they're going to need to be in bed by is probably in bed by 5.36 because they're just not capable of staying awake much later than that because their wake window is already maxed out. So, um, And then once they're a little bit older and they've adjusted a little bit more to the wake windows and they're you know gotten into the rhythm of just one nap a day then you can slowly and gradually increase the time that they go to bed to become a little bit later um, but initially what you're best to do is compensate not having two naps with going to bed a little bit earlier so look I hope that helps I've given you a bit of a snapshot and I've given you a fair bit of information on what I even tell my own clients what to do in situations like this. So um, it's very common. It's a very challenging time. But at the end of the day, it's all fixable. It's just about tweaking some times and making sure things work to their advantage, depending on their developmental age. Um, and once you get through this transition, most babies, I keep saying babies, most toddlers are happy. You know, you can usually continue on one nap a day up until depending on the child it could be preschool age it could even be school age so you know Noah my eldest he was still having a nap until he started school prep um, and he was five where Cruz my youngest he was not interested in napping any longer than about three and a half that's all I could really get from him so what I ended up doing for him I ended up just giving him some downtime in his bedroom I still made him go in his bedroom um, and he just spent about a half an hour in there on his bed reading books playing with toys playing with cars, things like that, just basically for me. But yeah, once you've transitioned from two naps to one, most children are happy to stay on one nap till at least, if you're lucky, preschool age. So look, I hope that helps. Um, thanks again for listening. If you do find this information helpful, please feel free to share it with another mom or a friend. Thanks again for listening and I'll see you next week's podcast.